All right, we are continuing with assignment one, our fantasy landscape composite. Composite is a digital version of collaging, right? We'll address our question of the day, number one, which is about advantages of digital versus traditional. But if you look at digital collage versus traditional collage, the digital advantage is that you can shrink your images, you can stretch them, you can change their colors, you can flip them. It's very different than being limited to what you cut out of a magazine. So we are doing a fantasy landscape. The goal is to use five or more ex external references. We're very likely going to use a lot more to make a believable fantasy landscape. That means that it doesn't look like a bunch of collaged pieces. It doesn't look like a bad composite creature on the, the Saturday Daily News tabloid. It instead looks like it's a believable piece of concept art like this piece is, which isn't real, but a composite from NASA of what a certain view from a certain planet would look like that's similar to our own planet, one of these Goldilocks systems. We talked about foreground, middle ground, background. We talked about avoiding figurative content. So even though this image is, is great, does foreground, middle ground, background, it becomes a challenge as concept art for setting because you have these waterfalls in it. And so when we later put animated content into it, then you have to do the extra work of also animating the moving features like the waterfalls or moving vehicles or animals. And we're gonna be creating creatures to put into here. So we want this to be a clean background plate as much as possible. You can use any theme you like. I am continuing with my uh, Charlie Parker played Bebop children's book theme. And it's kind of a, an abstract story for sure. There's a page that's lollipop, 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 right? So I was thinking kind of a lollipop landscape. There's another page which is barbecue your last leg bone. So I might put a barbecue turkey leg in there. Basically, it's going to be a landscape, fantasy landscape made of food and maybe some landscape elements. So what can I do to find these references? I want it to look colorful. I want it to look kind of childlike. I want to avoid horizontals and verticals. And I definitely want a strong foreground, middle ground, background. So that's my guiding sketch. What I do is I take my sketch and I'm going to open it in Photoshop. So no longer Photo P. So my sketch is in my assignment one folder, as is my inspiration, my Charlie Parker images. Those are optional. And now I'm actually going to right click on my sketch. And some of you did digital sketches. You can do that with this. You can take a photo of your sketch, whatever you post to Canvas. I want you now to open with Photoshop 2024. So you right click, open with Photoshop 2024. We practice this last class, signing in. So you should be signed in and it will just open. The first thing I'm going to do is turn on my rulers. So I'm actually going to do it right now. I'm going to reset all my defaults for Photoshop so that it matches the defaults. And that's a pretty tough thing. You have to do Option, Command, Shift, Tab before you open it. So you got to quit it. And then Option, Command, Shift, Tab, four keys. And it will ask if I want to reset all the default settings. So we do this in this lab more often than I would like because students mess up the settings within Photoshop, right? And since we're shared computers, we want to have predictable settings. So we want to start with default settings for our first assignment, but then I'm going to tell you what we add to that. So we have to first open our file. So now I'm going to show you again. I take my folder. I open up my assignment. I've made a folder, assignment one, and I open up my sketch. The same thing that I posted to Canvas. I open it with Photoshop 2024. You shouldn't have Photoshop beta on yours. You're not a beta tester for Adobe, but if there are multiple versions of Photoshop, use 2024. Use the latest version. Not because the other versions are bad, it's just because those might get, those might stop updating anytime, right? All right, now this is default Photoshop. 
this is what you see. If your Photoshop looks different than this, we'll reset your settings so it looks like this. There's a few things I recommend we do. First thing, and I'll just, I never do this, but I'll do this now just so it's not at all confusing on the video. I'm going to go to full screen view by clicking on this green plus sign, just so you don't see any of the desktop. Okay, first thing I do is I hide this bar because it's going to get in our way and distracting. So you click on those three dots and you say hide that bar. It's just a shortcut bar. The next thing we do is we want to see rulers, just like we did in Photopea. To do that, on a Mac, you hit Command-R. On a PC, it would be Control-R. But notice that the rulers, just like Photopea, are in pixels. And I don't want that. So I want to go to Photoshop, Settings, Units, and Rulers. So this is all in the video. Photoshop settings, units and rulers, click on that. You only have to do this once. And you're going to change the ruler unit from pixels to inches. It's going to save you a lot of time as we edit through the class. It's an advantage over the freeware of Photopea. Everything else is good. Say OK. The other thing we're going to change is under Photoshop, settings, performance, keep all of this the same. The default is to save only 50 steps back. We want to change that to 500. Right? Because these computers can handle a lot of data, and you will be really, really disappointed if it only saves 50 steps back. That's how many times you can hit Command Z or go back in your history. Because on these projects, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to want to go back more than 50 steps. All right. Don't play with the performance settings, please. These computers are all tuned up well. That using 70% of our RAM, of our scratch disk, is going to be just fine. These are, are huge studio computers. On your own computers, you can adjust those performance settings to work best for your device. All right, now I'm good. These are all the defaults. So the first thing I'm going to do is save it. And I do that by going to File. It's a little different than Photopea. Instead of Save As PSD, it's just save as. So file, save as. And this is where we get to name our file. Same system. You always use your name. I'm going to use the semester code, FA24, my name. Because I teach two sections where FA24, one, and then assignment number one. And I'm going to call it lollipop landscape. I always want you to use your name and then some description. All right, it's going to save where I opened it from, which is my assignment one folder. If you want to be really organized about it, just always navigate where you save to the desktop. And you can do that by just hitting command D. That way you can use function key F11. I'm going to go ahead and set this at, at the highest quality possible for a JPEG. Function key F11 to see your desktop. And then you want to find it so you can visually verify that it's saving. And i got to find it. There it is. I see it. So I'm going to move it to where I can see it. I'm going to mark it yellow because this is my working file. Okay. It's saved as a JPEG because that's how I opened it. Now I've successfully changed its name, but now I want to save it with multiple layers. And before I do that, I can set it up a little bit. First thing I can do, because I have rulers, I can use the move tool. That's the top tool, just exactly like Photopea. And I can click on the ruler and drag down a guide. And I want to do that from the side rulers as well. And I want to box in around my sketch. My sketch is not a perfect rectangle. doesn't need to be. I just want to box in to get the rough proportion of my sketch. I don't want to cut anything off. There I have it. Now, these are what are called guides. You can also see them under the view options, show guides. So the shortcut for that to turn on and off is command semicolon on a PC control semicolon. So they are not really there. They are there to help me. With those guides, I'm then going to move down to what is called the crop tool. And I'm going to 
draw the box and it will stick to my guides with the default settings and then hit return. What that did is just actually erase all the data outside of just my sketch. Why is that important? Because my sketch has a certain height and width. That's called an aspect ratio. I want to preserve that for my fantasy landscape. It's what I created. It's what I sketched. It's not something I took from someone else. So now I do the old thing of image and image size. And I see, okay, right now this is 27 inches by 18 inches, very close to 18 inches. But its resolution is 72 pixels per inch. And what is the minimum for this class? For our actual projects. Yep. They need to be at least 300 pixels per inch to be printable, and they need to be at least 8 by 10 inches to be a standard size, right? So that is your minimum. So for my image, my minimum would be a height of 8, a width of 12, because that matches the aspect ratio of my sketch, and a resolution of 300. But we're using Photoshop now, not online freeware, to do the, the bare minimum for processing reasons doesn't make sense. I want to make this so I can print it large if I want to. So you can keep it at the, as long as it's over 8 by 10 by 300, you're meeting the requirements, but I'm going to make it bigger. I'm going to make it 14 inches by 9. In fact, no, I'm going to make the smallest dimension 11. So the height is 11, the width is 16, and the resolution is not 300. It is what I call my studio preferred resolution which is 350. So whenever I do professional work for printing, I, I do it at 50 pixels per inch above the standard minimum. Why? Because sometimes they want to print my work larger than I intend for it to be printed. And so that way it doesn't lose any quality. So 350 is not a standard minimum. It's my lab preferred resolution. All right, so now I have an image. Notice what it did to the image. Photoshop scaled it up, makes it look really, really messy, right? But that's fine because this isn't my project. Okay, this is the sketch for my project. Now, <laughs> remember how we onion skinned in exercise two? We had our screen grab of the emoji and then we made it transparent and then we brought in, we made high quality vector shapes underneath it. Our high quality vector shapes are gonna come from the image references that we download. And you can see in my assignment folder, I don't have any image references yet, but because I had my sketch and I looked at the directions, I know that I can find high quality image references that are at least a thousand pixels in their smallest dimension. Instead of just searching for large under Google images, a better tool is to use Pixabay. So if I open up Pixabay and I'm gonna pretend I'm not logged in, so I'm going to sign out so it looks like when you first log in, right? And I'm going to search for something. Now, what does my sketch show? Lots of lollipops. A barbecue leg bone. So I know that's my vision, but now in Pixabay, I have to search for that, just like a Google image search. So I'm going to look for barbecue leg images which will be all these things, photos, graphics, all that kind of stuff. Okay, you will see, because you haven't joined and donated 10 or more images, you will see ads. This first row is ads from stock sites, which is what Pixabay is trying to put out of business by making them free royalty, royalty free, free resources. If I scroll down, I can see anything that has barbecue and leg in it, and there's 171 pages. But what's different about Pixabay is all of this is high quality reference. So let me narrow my search a little bit. I'm gonna look for turkey leg. And I'm gonna spell barbecue a little bit different, just BBQ. And I'm gonna say, just return to search. Scroll past that first one, I see kebabs, I see sausages. I see hot air balloons for some reason. I see this steak. It's not exactly what I want, but right click, open Lincoln new tab. We'll go right next to it. Keep looking 